Your moral and personal character are placed under the microscope when strategies of immense proportion occur, and your resiliency is measured by the scope of your response. For Jesse Diaz, he's certainly been through the full gamut of emotions when it comes to overcoming obstacles. At the age of 15, he lost his mother in a car accident with him sitting right next to her. It took him years to recover from that unthinkable tragedy. However, at the age of 28, he found his inner purpose through mixed martial arts. Now, as a professional fighter, he's found success once again. However, with COVID putting his fighting career on pause, he picked up a microphone and began talking about his life and his experiences through his podcast, The Hustle of Hair. He joined me this week because he wanted to share his view on life and so much more. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. To begin our conversation, Diaz recounted the impact losing his mother has had on the arc of his life and how he uses it as inspiration to succeed in every aspect of what he does. Yes, so when I was 15, me and my mom were, uh, she was taking me to school and um maybe a block away from our house, someone T-boned us. And what happened was that she it hit her side and she smashed into me. And she, um, she didn't die at the scene, but she was basically, you could, you, you knew she was, she wasn't going to make it from seeing her. And I was 15 years old and I didn't realize on how traumatic that was to see as a 15 year old until I'm 30. I'm 30 now. And I, I am barely realizing I wasn't at 15 years old. I wasn't able to, to cope with that. And so for almost my whole entire youth and all, half of my, I mean, now to my thirties until I was 30, I, I spent the whole entire time just really uh, trying to come to grips with the, the loss of my mom, seeing someone die with all that. And, um, I found martial arts th- uh, through through uh, coping with that because when you when you lose somebody like that and you deal with that, I didn't. I, my life ended right. I was uh, I wasn't able to go to school. I, I just gave up on school. I gave up on sports. Um, I was really into sports. I stopped doing sports, and then after high school, it just it was just partying and 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 not really focused on myself and. Then I met my wife and when you get married and you have to be emotional with somebody else, you realize you have to be, you have to uncover all those, those things you dealt with. And, and that's what happened. I got married and I had to come to grips with everything I dealt with. And I, I finally mourned over my mom when I was 28. And that's, that's uh, when I found martial arts. Diaz offers this piece of advice for anyone who has dealt with a similar tragedy, such as his own. Um, always take the help. Always take the help. When people reach out, take the help. I know it's hard because you, 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 it's hard to 
to say, oh, they, they, they could understand me. Because when, when it's first happening, especially at 15 years old, you think you're the only one dealing with this, that nobody else understands why you're hurting, why you're mad. And um, I would take the help and, and know that don't expect it to, to finally go away. Because the mourning and, the, and the, the, the loss, it never goes away. You just get stronger. And over time, you learn how to deal with it. Because at 30 years old, I still cry over my mom. I still get hurt. I still uh, mourn her. But it, I've gotten stronger, and I've learned how to deal with it. Diaz says that the discovery of mixed martial arts has really afforded him the opportunity to discover his true passions in life and pay tribute to and cope with the loss of his mom. So, um, seeing death, I, I took life at a totally different, uh, I took a journey totally different. The, the way I think about life, uh, it made me realize that you have to go after something because I, 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 in the back of my head from 15 to, to now, I always have someone telling me to, to live your life, be something greater. And, and from 15 to 20, 22, I, I was lost. And then at 22, I walked into a jujitsu gym in Sunnyvale called Smash. And from there sparked the interest in martial arts that, that really guided me. And I wasn't thinking about fighting. I wasn't thinking about uh, going into the cage or, or going into the ring. I was still dealing with a lot of stuff. And I, I, I got a job at FedEx. And I worked full time at FedEx until from when I was 22, I met my wife and I, I worked a full job at FedEx and, and 22 to 28, I was driving. And when you drive for, for 10, 12 hours a day, you're listening to a lot of books and you're listening to a lot of podcasts. And they're every, all the books that I listened to were about coaches and inspirational people. And they always told that the, every single book always said, go after it. They always preached, go, uh, no matter what, do what you love in life. And so driving at FedEx and, and s listening to those books and podcasts tell me you, you can't just waste your life. And, and finally, I, at 28 years old, I decided to, you know what, I, I'm going to quit my job. I, I found a mixed martial arts gym. And that's when I, I just decided I wanted to fight. And, and then, so I found my coach, my coach, coach Amber. She's a woman Muay Thai uh, uh, champion and went to worlds as an amateur. And when I found her, she really guided me to, to fighting. I told her I wanted to fight and she said, okay, if you want to fight, then you're going to have to do all, all this training. You're going to have to uh, eat right, train right, and really focus on it. And because of that, uh, I learned on how to learn stuff. And Jesse, I'm, I'm also curious to know what's the best les lesson you learned from your mom that you uh, carry with you today? So, in, um, I had a, a football game when I was 15. It was, it was the weekend before we got in our accident. And, it was, we we're playing uh, Scotts Valley. It's near Santa Cruz, California. And she, I, I had a bad game and she told me I was, so I had a bad game and I was really mad and I threw my helmet on the floor and I was walking with my head down and, and my mom never really lectured me. And that was the only really lecture she's ever given me. And she yelled at me. She, she told me, she's like, she never wants me to, to act like that. She said, she never wants me to suit, never wants me to lose my heart. And that was three days before she died. I'll never forget that. And I hold that, uh, with me my whole entire life. Never lose your heart. I, it's the way I fight. I come forward nonstop, uh, in life. I'm, I'm always going forward. I'm always striving for more. And, 
I hold that with me. The re- I'll hold that with me the rest of my life. And Jesse, I'm also uh, wanting to ask you about the idea of being grateful. Obviously, this year has been hard on all of us with grief and the COVID pandemic. So I'm wondering your perspective on being grateful and being appreciative for the things that we have in life. You have to. We're, I think more than ever this year, we learned that we're all in this together. We're all here on this earth for who knows what reason. But, but we're, we're just trying to get by and live our lives. But at the same time, it's, it's like you, you're born and then you, you die. It, don't waste it don't don't waste this 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 time you have on this earth because before you know it it, it it's gone and i learned that at, at an early early age my mom was 39 years old and it, it taught me that you never know when you're gonna go so every second matters when you see your loved one when you see your mom when you see your brother when you see your sister just tell them you love them because you never know when they're gonna drive down the street and get an accident you don't ne- you never know when they're going to get sick or they they're going to die you got to love life you have to love people too and tell me what's uh, your definition of living a full life obviously you've been through tragedy at a young age but i'm also wondering how you overcame uh, sort of getting or reclaiming your life after your mom died what what is your definition in your view of living a full life um so i didn't i overcame all that i overcame my mom uh dying seeing her die everything I, i grew up with and and the tragedy of that getting through that made me realize how to live a full life it's it's struggle if you're not struggling and if you're comfortable, then it, it, your life is boring. <laughs> your life is boring. And, and, and that's what I've learned. I, I, if you're, I've learned to always get up and do something. Always, never feel relaxed. Never feel comfortable. I, with, with this podcast and with fighting and, and everything, I quit my job, yes. But I'm telling myself, if I don't make this work, then we're my family's gonna starve my family's not gonna eat we're gonna go broke i'm all even if we do have money in the bank i'm always telling myself you're gonna starve if you don't make this happen so work your butt off and people think that's that 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 might suck or that's uh it's a hard life to live but it makes me happy it working my butt off hey there's nothing wrong with hard work huh jesse (laughs) Hi, Jesse. I always, uh, as you know from reading up on me, I was born with what's called a spastic quadriplegia cerebral palsy. It just simply means that I don't have enough oxygen in my legs to walk uh, normally. So I'm I'm curious because I always tell people uh, don't uh, miss out on an opportunity to maximize your moment of influence. I'm curious to know what uh, does maximizing your moment of influence look like for you? Maximizing my moment of influence. I, I believe that so when the opportunity arises, you have to be prepared. You, you, you always have to be prepared. When, when you're starting to go after your passion, when you're starting to go after your dreams, it feels like, like no one's going to care. It feels like that you're never going to make it. But if you work your butt off and you prepare yourself the best you can, there's, more, there's so many people on this earth. I think 7.2 billion people on this earth. Someone's going to take notice to you. And when that day comes that's when it's going to all start working. So if you're not maxim, 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 I can't even talk right. Maximizing your, maximizing 
your worth and what you're doing, then then that moment's that moment's never gonna arrive because you're not prepared for that person to meet you or you're not prepared for that opportunity. Okay, let's have some fun. I know that we uh, tackled some uh, heavy subjects and I appreciate you uh, sharing us such an intimate part of your life, but I also want to have some fun. So tell me about uh, your podcast, The Hustle of Hair, and the message that you're hoping to uh, uh, deliver through your podcast, Bon. Yes. Um, learning martial arts, I, I, I realize that there's so many people that specialize in one thing throughout their whole entire life, and they learned how to learn. And that gave me so much uh that gave me it opened my mind to what what people are capable of and there's a lot of people i grew up with there's a lot of people i worked with that didn't really have dreams or passions and me and my wife we we both quit our jobs to go after after our passions i want to be a professional fighter i'm an amateur fighter right now and my i also i want to be a good podcaster too but uh my wife wants to have her own mobile salon and we're we're just grinding away trying to to do that but at the same time i wanted to start this podcast to to highlight those people going after their dreams to highlight those people going after their their passions and what it takes i'm going to interview people well i am interviewing people that are in the beginning stages of that of that or at the 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 succeeding stages be, being successful already but i guarantee you every person that's successful that i i interviewed so far that they're never happy with their trade they're never happy with their passion they want to make it better always and i want to highlight that i want to show people how hard it is to go after your dreams but how easy it is by just stepping forward and constantly going forward and the reason why we call it hassle of hair my fighting nickname is the uh, jesse the hassle diaz and then my wife wants to do a salon uh, make a salon so we called it the hassle of hair oh uh, well i tell you Jess. Jesse, you're a marketer before you even started, right? <laughs> I think I learned I learned over the year uh, uh, over this year to to learn how to market myself. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a shameless plug to get to some cheddar cheese, right? <laughs> yes. Hey, hey, Jesse, I'm also curious to ask you. I can talk to you forever, but I, I'm also curious to ask you your best piece of it of advice for entrepreneurs that m may have a nine to five that are considering quitting their job to focus on their passion and entrepreneurship what would be your message uh, to those people it's it's a crazy thing when so many people are going to tell you you're crazy what are you doing because they don't understand your love the when you talk about marriage, the next, somebody's wife or somebody's husband, you're not going to love them. You're not going to know why they love them, but they do. It comes with your passions and your dreams. No one else knows why you love it that much. So it's worth quitting your job for. It's worth going all in for. So don't let those voices and those people telling you don't do it, uh, make you not do it. And and that that's the number one thing and be prepared that it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of work i'm i'm working right now i'm not successful i'm just i just don't want to be in my deathbed one day looking at my life saying i didn't try and um that's how i'm always gonna live so just be prepared to work and don't don't let those other people bring you down and Jesse, I'm also curious to ask you about relationships in, in marriage. Obviously, uh, from your tragedy earlier in life, does that help you at all uh, build a stronger marriage? And what do you have to say to pe people that are start, start, starting out just married uh, about overcoming obstacles in a marriage and again did your early experiences help you at all uh, become a stronger and better husband yes 100 100 percent um the 
the advice I would give to people that are barely starting out uh, on marriage is I'm, I'm seven years into marriage. I believe she might get mad at me, but I'm seven years, <laughs> I'm seven years into to marriage and it's hard. It, it's just like martial arts. It, it takes work. It, it's not just love all the time. It's not just uh, everything's rainbows and butterflies. There are times when you have to grind it out and and talk to your your spouse and and get inside their head. Because when you first meet a person, you're in love with them. You're you're so passionate over them. You're you're in lust, right? And you realize you don't really know that person. And you move in with them and you marry them and. It takes years to really dive into a person's head. And this pandemic made me realize how much I didn't really know my wife uh, emotionally. And being bunkered down with each other, it, it made us open up a lot. And doing the podcast, it, it made us open up a lot. And it, it, it got us in each other's heads to see how we're thinking. And don't give up. That's, that's, yeah, with anything, don't give up. That's what I say about marriage. It, it's going to take work. It's going to take a lot of work. And, and talk to me about your passion for fighting and uh, how you find your inner self in the ring when you fight, bud. So I'm, a, I'm an amateur fighter. I, I've had four fights, uh, two in MMA and two in Muay Thai. And... It's, I, I'm a fanboy at heart. I'm a, a, a fight nerd at heart and I love fighting. And the, the journey I've went on from 28 till now with my, my coach from, from Strike Fitness, her name's Coach Amber. She's an amazing woman. And the journey that I've went on with her is, I, I, there's nothing else that I, I would want. Money doesn't matter. I am fighting amateur right now, so money doesn't matter. The experiences I got from it were were just amazing. And it just, when I'm in the ring, it's my whole entire life. I, the great, my best fight so far, I mean, my most memorable fight so far wasn't my, my the three, I won three out of uh, four fights. The one I remember the most was my loss. And... I broke my nose. I'll never forget that because that in the second round, I broke my nose. The doctor, uh, the, when we got to my corner, they, my coach knew it was broken, but she didn't tell me. And we went out in the third and it was leaking uh, blood. And the, the doctor, uh, they stopped the fight for a little bit. They told me if I still wanted to keep fighting. I told him, yeah, everybody wants that moment, right? Everybody, I, well, I do. Uh, when you're watching Rocky or the fight movies, you're, you're telling yourself, man, I, I want that moment of, of adversity, right? And to show what I'm made of. And it was a minute before the, uh, 30 seconds before the fight was going to be over. And they asked me if I still wanted to keep on fighting. I told them, yes. And I would do what I did all, with everything. I, I went forward. And I didn't stop fighting. I kept on. I kept on going forward. And I may have lost that fight, but it taught me so much. It taught me so much. And and I just love fighting. And it it sucks right now because of the pandemic. But I'll never stop doing martial arts. Hey, Jesse, I'm also curious to uh, get your thoughts on what do you do. Do you think? a lot of people miss out on when they try to find their own passion and come uh, to the center of what ma makes them happy in life. Everybody's passion is different. And it's your passion is not always going to stay the same. It's not, it's not going to stay the same. Like the 2020 hit, people had to change their lives. I, I had to change my life. I was in February. I had my fourth fight in a year and two months. I had my fourth fight. And, and all of a sudden they're telling me fighting's done for a while uh, and not uh, amateur completely done. Right. Um, so I had this dream of becoming a fighter. I had this dream of becoming a, 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 a MMA professional fighter and Muay Thai fighter and it stopped. So my passion was done. I had to find another passion and that was hearing people's stories 
podcasting, learning how to produce a project, learning how to make something. And that's what it's all about. It's once you start creating something you have inside your head at, at 28 years old, I, I stopped, I stopped having the nine to five and told myself, I want to become a fighter. I wasn't even thinking pro at the time, but I made that happen. I created that. February, March in 2020, the pandemic happened. Fighting stopped. I told my wife, I want to start a podcast. She thought I was crazy. Everybody thought I was crazy. I produced it. I went from nothing, not learning audio, from not learning uh, a sound I mean like a sound is audio not learning video editing not learning uh sound editing how to put a podcast on on the internet how to I'm learning how to interview people how to get guests I made that happen uh you just have to start with one thing learning how to do something and you'll find your passion through that maybe my passion is not really uh, to one passion of mine is fighting and maybe I have another passion in 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 journalism and and communications and all that because I'm going to start going to school for that too. So just learn, go out there and learn. Hey, I always tell people that life is a constant learning experience. So I agree with you there, buddy. And you can add me to your roster of guests whenever you need one, bud. So. Yes, yes, I want to. So, hey, my, uh, my last question for you, Jesse, is – um, how would you define fun and, and come in the center with being a full and complete person for yourself? Uh, it's funny because when you get older, you lose that, that sense of, of just not caring you lose that you care. So when you get older, you care so much what people think and, and what would they, what, what your words mean and, and how you affect other people. And I think social media even makes that worse and people lose that fun because they try to be this person. They're not, I'm, I'm myself 24 seven. I'm, I'm always going to be that. And, that's how I have fun. I never hold myself back. I never, I'm always an uh, open book and I'm never going to, I'm never going to lose that. Me, I have a 14 year old daughter who thinks I'm just a, a, a knucklehead because we're always joking around. My wife is just like, I married a man child and it's just, you have to have fun in life. If you're not laughing, if you're not, if you're not enjoying life, then you're doing something wrong. So fix it. Absolutely. And I, I just have one other question for you. In terms of leaving a legacy, Jesse, I'm all about leaving a personal legacy. And my saying in life is what you're will, what are you willing to do to contribute to a better tomorrow? So I'll end on this by asking what your definition of a positive legacy is and how do you want to leave the world uh, for a better tomorrow? Yes, that's that's one hundred percent what I'm all about. Because that's leaving a legacy is a positive attitude, positive things is is way more important than than money. It's way more important than uh, shiny objects, jewelry, big cars, big houses. That's not a legacy. That all goes away with everybody I deal with, with everybody, not deal with, but with everybody I come in contact with, I want to leave with a positive attitude. There, there is so much hate in this world. There is so much fighting where people can't get along. And, and I'm not saying uh, the world is but, uh, rainbows and butterflies and it's all going to, it, it's perfect. If, if you just be nice, it's, it's not, it's, there's always going to be evil in this world, but, if you're not evil and you can make a difference with your attitude and your voice and, and make someone's day by just saying hello, then you, you should do it. I'm going to do it. Everybody I leave, uh, everybody I come in contact with, I'm always going to leave with them happy. I mean, uh, with them thinking I'm, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound conceited uh, with them just being happy that they met me. Cause I, that's what you should be doing. Right. 
Absolutely. Hey, Jesse, I want to uh, commend you for your uh, strength and your fortitude and, and for sharing a very revealing and intimate part of yourself with me uh, this afternoon. You've inspired me to be a better person. Uh, and I want to thank you very much uh, for your time this afternoon. It's most appreciated. Thank you, Kevin.